Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I'm your host Geek Man and today I'm going to be teaching you how to create editable comic book type text in Photoshop. A couple of uh, s uh, assumptions that I'm making. First, that you're using Photoshop CC 2015 or later. And second, uh, I am using Windows, so if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on your keyboard, I mean hit the command key on a Mac keyboard. And if I say hit the alt key on a keyboard, that means the option key on a Mac keyboard. So, uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing that we're going to need is a new file. So let's hit control N on our keyboard to bring up the new file uh, dialog box. And then we will name this um, comic book text because that's what we're making. Our width is going to be 3840 pixels and our height will be 2160 pixels. Our resolution will be 150 pixels per inch. RGB color, background doesn't matter. We're going to make our color profile sRGB because that's what I normally work in and that's perfect. So let's hit OK and we have our new document. Now we're going to want the background color to be a nice blue so let's click on our foreground color to bring up our color picker and uh, you could use any color that you like. I'm going to use a nice blue. Uh, the color that I'm using is 3C93DD. Uh, That's this nice blue color and then you can fill the background with the color that we just chose. So you can do that by using the paint bucket. You can go to edit, uh, fill. Uh, I prefer to just use alt and the backspace button to fill with the foreground color. Uh, we now want to unlock our background on our layers uh, palette. So we're going to click on the little uh, lock icon here and that will unlock it. Then we will double click and we will rename it background because I like to keep my layers palette nice and neat. Next up we're going to create a, uh, a halftone pattern above this background to make it look like a, a circular halftone pattern is coming out from the center of our file. So we're going to create a new layer by clicking on the create new layer icon on the bottom of our layers palette. That will create a layer above our background. We'll double click on the name and we're going to name this halftone once again because I like my layers palette neat. Now in order to create this halftone pattern we're going to need our uh, foreground and background to go back to their default black and white colors. The way we get to those uh, default colors is by hitting the D key on our keyboard and then we want the white to be our foreground color so we'll hit X on our keyboard to switch foreground and background colors and now we have white as our foreground and black as our background. Then we need our gradient tool so we'll hit G on our keyboard to bring up the gradient tool and we'll set the options as follows. We'll make sure that it is foreground to background which is the very first gradient that you can choose. We will not choose linear. We are going to choose radial gradient. Mode is normal. Opacity is 100%. Reverse is unchecked. Dither and transparency are both checked. Now we need to be, uh, we need to start our gradient at roughly the center of our document. It doesn't have to be the exact center. Uh, roughly center is good enough. So right about here looks good. We're going to hold down the shift key on our keyboard then click and drag outwards to the edge of our document. Let go at the edge and we get a white to black gradient starting at the center of our document. Then we're going to go up to filter. We're going to go to pixelate, color halftone, and we're going to set it as follows. 30 for the maximum radius, 0, 0, 0, and 0 for all four channels. And we're going to hit OK. And we now have a halftone pattern radiating out from the center of our document. We're going to change our layer blend mode to overlay. And we're going to change the opacity to 75% so that it doesn't overpower our background. Perfect. Now it's time for a little cartoony burst coming out from the center of our document. So we're going to need another layer for that. So let's create a new layer once more. We're going to double click on the name and we're going to name this burst. Hit enter. 
And for making the burst, we're going to need our polygon tool. That can be found under the square rectangle polygon tool by clicking, holding down your mouse button, and then this pop-out menu will come out and go down to polygon tool and click uh, let go. Now click once anytime, anywhere inside of your document to bring up the create polygon flyout menu. And we're going to change uh, the width and height to 3000 for the width, 1500 for the height, number of sides is 20, smooth corners is off, star is checked, indent sides by 90%, smooth indents is also checked. Hit OK and we have our burst. Going to hit V on the keyboard to bring up our move tool and then we're going to click and drag until it snaps to the center point. So move slowly and it snaps just like that. Let go and we have our burst. But it does look a little anemic and small on our document so we're going to resize that by transforming it. So hit Control T on your keyboard and when you move your mouse up to the upper right hand corner of the uh, uh, box and it will turn into a double headed arrow at an angle then hold down shift and alt and then click and drag outwards that will constrain it to its original aspect ratio and it will resize it from the center of the object so we're going to make it a roughly this big we're going to let go and we're going to hit enter now we're going to want this slightly transparent but we're going to give it a dark black outline. So we're going to do that using layer effects. Most people would use stroke. I'm not going to use stroke. I'm going to use inner glow. I found that inner glow works better for what I want. So we're going to leave that at normal. We're going to put the opacity up at 100. So blend mode is normal. Opacity is 100. Noise is zero. The color is black. The technique is softer. It's going to come from the edge. Choke is 100. Size is going to be 28. Uh, the uh, contour is going to be linear, anti-alias is not checked, uh, range is going to be 100, and jitter is going to be 0. Then we're going to hit OK. Oh, before we hit OK, we're going to go to blending options, and we're going to change our fill opacity, not layer opacity, which is up here. We're going to change the fill opacity to 75%. Hit OK, and now we have our burst. Now that we have all three of our background images ready, we're going to select all of them by clicking on Burst. Then we're going to hold down Shift and click on Background. That selects all three layers. We're going to click and drag it down to our Group icon at the bottom of our Layers palette. Let go and they will all be grouped together. Double click on Group and we're going to name this Background Elements. and we have everything nice and neat in our background. And now it's time to move on to the main event, which is the actual comic book text. Now we're gonna do this all on one layer and the text itself will remain editable, meaning you can change the text to whatever you want at a later date and the effect will remain the same. Now for this, I'm gonna be using uh, the uh, Obelix Pro regular font. I'll leave a link below. You can find it at dafont.com, but you can use any comic book type font that you'd like as long as it's fairly thick and looks like it's hand drawn. So let's uh, create a new layer for our text by going down to our new layer uh, icon. Click on that. We don't need to rename it because it will automatically change its name once we type in some text. So let's choose our text tool by uh, clicking on T on our keyboard to bring up the text tool. And as I said, I'm using Obelix Pro Regular at 210 points, sharp and centered. The color doesn't matter. We're going to be changing that. But for now, I have it as white. Let's go to the center of our document, click and start typing. I'm going to use my name with an exclamation point because we are in a comic book font. Um, now, uh, most uh, free fonts that you get out there have alternating uh, kerning between the letters. That means that the space between the letters uh, is different depending on what letter is next to it. For example, this E has a little tiny space, whereas the K is overrunning the M. 
Now I kind of like that it is overrunning the M slightly with the K and the M, so I'm going to do that for almost all of the text that I've got. And the way that you do that is you put your cursor in between letters, and then you hit Alt and the left and right arrow to make the spacing larger and smaller. You then move the uh, cursor to the next letters with using the arrow key, and there you go. So we're going to make all this pretty for me. Make that a little closer, and we now have our text the way that we like it. We're going to hit the check mark to accept those changes. Going to hit V on our keyboard for the move tool, and then we're going to click and drag until once again we snap to the center of our document. Next up is layer style time. So let's get started. Layer styles, we're going to start with our stroke. Now the stroke that I'm looking for is going to give us a kind of hand-drawn uh, charcoal-y look on the outside, as if somebody had drawn the, uh, the original lettering with a charcoal pencil. So we're going to do our stroke. We're going to change its size to 4. We're going to make the position centered. The blend mode is going to be normal, and the opacity is going to change to 90%. We're going to leave overprint unchecked, and the fill type is going to be a gradient. We're going to click on the gradient itself to make a custom gradient that'll bring up our gradient editor. And we've got black on one side, white on the other side. And what we want is for it to be completely black. A strange type of gradient, yes, but we want it completely black. So you click on the uh, rightmost thing. You can double click to bring it up, uh, the color picker, or you can just click in the color and you choose black and now you've got a black to black gradient and what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, opacity stoppers up here and we're going to change where they are and make it go from solid black on the left and solid black on the right to transparent in the center so it's solid black now so we're going to change its location to 75 percent uh, and we're going to change the other one to 25 percent and then we're going to click next to the 25% to bring up a new stop. We're going to change its opacity to 0, and we're going to change its location to 30. Then we're going to click next to the 75% uh, stop to bring up another 0% opacity stop, and we're going to change its location to 70%. And that is our custom gradient that goes from black to transparent to black. Hit OK, and then we're going to change a few more things in the stroke. We're going to leave reverse unchecked. We're going to leave the style as linear. The align with layer is checked. The angle, however, will change to 94%. Uh, percent. Dither will stay as is, so we'll scale, stay at 100%. Next up, we are going to put in an inner shadow. So let's uh, check our inner shadow. We're going to change its blend mode to normal. We're going to change its color, make sure that it is black. We are going to change its opacity to 100%. Uh, we're going to uncheck Use Global Light because we don't want to use the global light. And we're going to change its angle to 163 degrees. Distance will be 3. Choke will be 100. Size will also be 3. Uh, contour will be a ring double, which is this guy right here. It looks like two pointy mountains. Anti-alias is off and noise we're going to bring up to 100%. Now we need another inner shadow on the opposite side of, of the letters, so we're going to click on the little plus icon next to inner shadow to duplicate the inner shadow that we just made. Then we're going to make just a few small changes. We're going to change the angle to 22, the distance to 2, and the size to 1. And as you can see, the letters now look like they were kind of sort of hand-drawn. Well enough for government work. Next up, we're going to give the letters some color by using gradient overlay. We're going to leave the blend mode as normal, the opacity at 100%, dither is unchecked, and we're going to create a brand new gradient. Uh, opacity, we're not going to touch this time. Now we're just going to change the end colors. So click on the leftmost color, and then click on the color to bring up our color picker and we're going to use this color. We're going to use uh, FFB20A 
for the leftmost, which gives us a kind of gold color. Then we're going to click on OK, and we're going to click on the rightmost color, bring up our color picker, and we're going to give it a kind of red color, which is FF1E00. Then we're going to hit OK, and OK again, and we have our color. Le make the angle 90, we're going to leave global light unchecked so that it stays at 90. Distance will be 10, spread will be 100, size will be 16, contour and noise don't touch, and layer knocks out drop shadow you're going to turn off. Uncheck that. Then we're going to create another drop shadow. We're going to click on it. We're going to change its color to black and leave everything the same except for distance and size. Distance will now be 46 and size will now be 59. We're done with this uh, layer style. Hit OK and as you can see we now have comic book text looks very nice but there's one last little bit that will make it look perfect and that is we're going to give it a slight arc so it looks more like it's coming out from the center so we're going to go back to our text tool by hitting T and we're going to click on this uh, icon here which is create warp text we're going to change the style to arc and we're going to change it from the bend of plus 50 to just 15 percent hit OK and here we have our fully editable text. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you did please leave a comment or give me a thumbs up and if you want more tutorials please subscribe. This is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.